Okay, in this video, we're gonna ice some decorative sugar cookies with royal icing. And here I've got a thicker consistency of the royal icing. I have a recipe I absolutely love. It's really, really simple, and I'll include that in the description below. I'm also using a disposable tipless piping bag. I just get those off Amazon. Again, I can put the link below in the description. And I'm just gonna be doing some basic white cookies. Um, the shapes that you see on my tray there are like a plaque shape, and they're all gonna be solid white. The technique I'm gonna be using today is a thicker royal icing for the borders and a thinner royal icing for the flooding or the background of the cookie. There are two ways to do this. You can do what I'm doing today with a thicker consistency as your border and thinner for the center, or you can do the entire cookie in the same consistency. But when I was starting out, I could not grasp that. I always made it too thin or too thick and it never worked for both the border and the filling. And so this is how I started out with a thicker border and a thinner flooding consistency. And so I wanted to show you that today. So as you can see, I've cut a hole about a pencil lead size in the end of my tipless piping bag. And I'm just following the border of the cookies all the way around. And this is in real time. I have not sped up this portion of the video. So you can actually see how long it takes to complete the border all the way around. And I tend to do the entire tray of borders and then go back and fill in the entire tray. I just feel like it's better for timing, not to have to put the bag down after every cookie and pick up another bag that has the thinner consistency of icing in it. So I feel like this is a better management of my time. So just watch this video. I'm gonna speed it up now so you don't have to watch me go this slow, but this is really what you're looking for in the borders. Okay, so now I'm ready to make a thinner consistency of the royal icing to flood with. And as you can see there, it's kind of similar to molasses. Um, or if you were to melt a bunch of marshmallow cream, that's probably what it would look like. But that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the same style bag. I just got a new bag. I'm going to fill this up the same amount. Now you will notice as you do this, you're going to have to refill your bag several times because obviously you're going to be using a lot more icing as the filling, as the flooding, than you actually would for the borders. So I just added a little bit of water and it's not an exact measurement because it really depends on how much you're starting with, but you just want to add, I usually add it about a teaspoon at a time of lukewarm room temperature water just until it's that like molasses, thick honey style of flooding consistency. And then I'm just going to fill that bag. I'm going to cut a hole out in the bottom about pencil lead size again, and then I'm going to move it around on the cookie. And you can use several different ways of several different tools of doing this. In this particular video, I'm using this tool that I have had for so long. It is actually a small paintbrush that the actual brush part broke off. And so it's just like a stick basically, but it's got dulled rounded ed edges and I love it. And that's what I started learning with years ago because it doesn't leave lines in the cookie, I guess you would say. So it, it moves the icing around just enough because I basically want to pull the icing to the edge where I've piped that border. So as you can see there, I just piped basically the center of the cookie and left a small edge around the edges. And the reason I do that is because if you were to fill it all the way up, you'd probably put too much icing on there. And once that royal icing spreads out and fills out a little bit on its own, it could be too much icing and it could drip off your cookie. And I'm just kind of going small circles. I'm bringing the icing that's in the center of the cookie towards the edges. And I'm just making the icing touch the edge, touch the border that I piped earlier. I'm not so much pushing it as just letting it touch because it'll stick to itself. And then because where all icing kind of fills in on its own, it will settle and fill in any gaps that I've left behind. The purpose of moving it around with a stick or with a scribing tool, which you can also find on Amazon, those are more like um, a little pointy, almost like you're using a pen 
and a lot of my videos you'll see me using those as well that's actually what I use more of now but in this video just grab any tool that works for you and to bring all that icing that's in the center of your cookie to that edge where you've piped the thicker border and that'll hold it in and keep it from overflowing now it can still overflow if you've got a little too much on your cookie I am notorious for that but there's always ways to fix that so just kind of watch me here and see how I'm doing it I'm not really scraping the cookie itself I'm trying to keep my hand without a lot of pressure and kind of keep it raised up above the icing a little bit so I'm gonna speed up the video now so you don't have to watch me again go really slow but hopefully this will give you a general idea of how you can flood a basic cookie Okay, I'm gonna slow the video back down because I really want you to notice, see that top left-hand corner cookie? It has a drip coming off the, the edge of it there. And as I'm recording this video earlier, I didn't even notice it. But what you do when that happens is you want to let it dry for about 30 minutes, and then I want you to go and get a small paring knife that's really sharp, not serrated, and you just kind of scrape that off you shouldn't have to really cut much because it should be partially dry but still soft so just get your paring knife and just scrape off or cut off that little drip and then you can watch it so every 30 minutes or so look at it to see if you need to do it again if more icing has moved down and that'll keep it from creating like a hard crust that you can't really change later then you just let these dry overnight for around 12 hours and then you can decorate them at however you please the next day so I know this video wasn't super exciting, but I really wanted it to be informative and to really show you what goes into a, getting your base on a decorative cookie. Check out the links below and watch the rest of my videos.